Is the situation in Bakhmut critical? And has Ukraine attempted to, uh, what's the non-demonetized word? Uh, we'll say eliminate uh, President Putin, or is this all just a false flag? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It is May 3rd, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay, first, let's take a look at the control map. Biggest change, again, is in Bakhmut. As you guys can see, right, Russian forces continue to advance, um, you know, in increments along the front line. But as you can see, in terms of areas Ukraine still controls of urban Bakhmut, we're really looking at, there's probably fewer than 10 blocks that are uncontested right now. Um, the entire remainder of the city is is being uh, contested by Russian forces. And as I've talked about for months, I don't think we should, we should frame this in catastrophic terms. We've seen in the footage that we've looked at both here and on my site, combatvetnews.com. Um, and as you guys know, combatvetnews.com is, well, my site, uh, where I have not only a bunch of news stories um, where I that I can't get to here um, <clears throat> on my daily updates, but we also put all my YouTube videos on here. And if you want to support what I do, you can become a member. Any one of these tiers is going to get you access to the members only content where I take a look at the combat videos that I just can't cover on YouTube. They're GoPro footage, they're drone footage, they're too intense for YouTube. But when we have looked at it, in fact, we've looked at video from the defense of Bachmet here during this trench clearing operation as well as um, some drone footage of trench warfare uh, also in the Bakhmut area. And what we've seen looking at this um, is that the forces defending this territory, they are not necessarily Ukraine's top forces. We know the Foreign Legion is here. Yesterday, they um, it became public knowledge that a number of Foreign Legion legionnaires uh, were KIA. But the or most of the troops that I've seen look like Ukrainian TDF forces, right? Territorial defense forces. And when you, with, with, you know, varying levels of training and experience, some seem to be very professional soldiers. Some seem to be somewhat more amateurish uh, or, or less trained. And I say that um, because when you have these lesser trained troops the offense is much more technical than the defense, right? Defensive operations are fairly straightforward. You occupy a position, you find one that's got good cover, concealment, fields of fire, um, and then you hold it as long as you can until you're given an order to withdraw, and then you withdraw. It's fairly straightforward. Um, offense is much more technical. It requires the integration of fires, maneuver, support, uh, fire, you know, bounding movements. Um, it requires greater leadership, greater communication and coordination. And the units that are best at that are not in Bakhmut. They are preparing for the counteroffensive because obviously your best units need to do your most technical tasks. So when we see this steady attrition of Bakhmut, to me, this is part and parcel of the Ukrainian objective in this city. Um, and I think it's important for us, but also really important for Ukraine's political leadership to understand and internalize the idea that Bakhmut is a means to an end, right? The, uh, the fight in Bakhmut attrited some of the best Wagner forces from Russia. It's pinned the VDV in place in the north and south. And that is not insignificant. That's meaningful contributions to the war effort if the counteroffensive is launched before the Battle of Bakhmut culminates. Because once Bakhmut's taken, Russia will plant the flag, they'll transition to defensive operations, and it will free up elite-tier Russian troops and Wagner mercenaries to reinforce defensive efforts wherever that counteroffensive gets launched. So as you guys can see, Russia's already starting to pivot to the defense, launching just 30 attacks in the last 24 hours. You, you, this is, again, very sparse. A little One attack along Kremino Lyman, three along the Bakhmet axis, and that's basically it. One in Marinka and one to the south of Avdivka. That's it. Every other Russian troop is digging in. Um, 
we can be confident of that. So confident, in fact, that the uh, Russia, or sorry, the Russian information apparatus has already started to prepare for both outcomes for a Ukrainian counteroffensive. Um, a leaked manual directing Russian uh, state media outlets uh, provides instructions on how the Ukrainian counteroffensive is to be covered. Um, it emphasizes that the Russian public should be told that um, the, the uh, that the you. The offensive is a given. The media should focus on the strength of Western assistance and support for Ukraine. Um, and that the idea is that the coverage allows the Kremlin to announce a military victory if the counteroffensive underperforms. And it will pre, it'll lay the groundwork for justifications um, should the counteroffensive succeed um, and inflict significant losses on Russian forces. Uh, and this is, of course, important because the in Kherson and Kharkiv, uh, the Russian public and the uh, mill bloggers uh, really w did not understand how dire the situations were. Um, and so it felt to them shocking to see what was supposed to be a, an effective war effort by Russia suddenly get flipped so badly. So to me, this is an indicator, again, that Russia is not that optimistic about the way things are going to go. Here's where things get really interesting. Russia has claimed that a drone uh, has attempted to uh, KIA uh, Putin in a... But here's the thing. During a major Russian political uh, event, uh, I think it was their May Day parade, but we have video of it. Not sure. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it to you guys. And if YouTube demonetizes me, sorry. This is preposterous, right? And you'll see why in a second. Okay. Now, bear in mind, we can see here, these are some of the stands, right? It looks like this is the road where there's actually going to be the march taking place um, or is taking place, actually. But notice here, there's the drone flying up and it's going to see it produces a fairly small um, explosion, but look what it's targeting. It's targeting the, the Russian flag. Um, and this is significant because that's not where anyone is. In fact, if your goal was to find the safest possible spot to detonate a small explosive, the flag would be it. Um, it was also in full view of the cameras and was very dramatic. Um, and to me, this very, very dramatic, almost symbolic attack on the Russian flag, um, it combined with the fact that it was like pretty inept when Ukraine has been fairly effective. And when it's uh, drone strikes fail, they don't fail like that. They would be taken down by Russian air defenses. And Moscow has pretty famously a, a very capable ballistic missile um, uh, anti-air protection system. Uh, so I'm really shocked that it would get that close and then still fail by attacking the Russian flag. And so I think it's actually fairly credible that this is indeed a false flag, part of an effort by Russia to gin up support uh, and to make the Russian public feel as though they are under attack and directly threatened on a more personal level by Ukraine. Because again, in the few interviews where Russian citizens acknowledge like are honest about their feelings towards ukraine they say why why is this faraway country a relatively small piece of territory relative to the size of russia itself as you guys can see here's moscow the entirety the contested region in ukraine is a sliver a fraction of a fraction of the areas of russia itself um why is it worth fighting for why is it why is it necessary for Russia to go there? And the truth is, Russia doesn't have a good explanation because it's not. Um, and so, but by framing um, Ukraine as able to strike in the heart of um, Russia itself, I think there's a, a hope that this will 
galvanize the Russian people to support increasingly dr draconian measures in this conflict. Anyway, guys, that is all I had for you. Uh, thank you, as always. Be sure to check out CombatVetNews.com. Thank you so much to our members of Combat Vet News, our Colonel tier members, um, and of course, our Lieutenant tier members. I couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.